Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, Lili Nishma Asimi Mirosi Rusmas Mordechai. Welcome to all the new faces, the guests. It is Lil Bedikas Chometz here in Chicago. And the plan is to have two shiurim for those who could uh, make it through. So one shiur at a time. We're starting today, Daf Lametes and Be'ezer Hashem. We're going to be doing Daf Mem. And this is also that the people in Eretz Yisrael have a shiur when Yantav is over for them. And tomorrow, Be'ezer Hashem, 2 o'clock p.m. right here, we're doing another shiur. So I want to share with you a story that happened to me today. For me, it was a very powerful story. If anybody takes out of it something, Givaldig, I went to sell my chametz by Reb Chaim Tversky, the Rav here in Linkwood. So I'm selling the chametz. He said, I want to tell you a great story. I was like, yeah. He said, you know, years ago, as a Rav, a guy came over to me and said, Rabbi, what do I do? I have a personality defect. And I start different projects. I start different books. I start different mesechtes. I start different jobs, things, I can never, I'm not a finisher, I'm a starter, not a finisher, what do I do? So the, the Rav told him, eh, pick something that you really like, you know, go with something that you enjoy. So, I said, okay, it's an interesting story, but what does that have to do with Mechir Chometz and why do you think it's so powerful? He says, the guy that came to me was you. I wasn't laughing, I started crying. So this is like 20 years ago. And I came to him, I said, I have, a, I have a personality problem. I can't stick to things. And he said, you know, I actually, when you made a Siyam Ashas, and this is going back years ago when I made a Siyam Ashas here in Chicago, he spoke, he reminded me, he spoke, and I said the story. I said, you said it, that was me? He said, no. I said, so why didn't you say it was me? He said, I thought I would insult you. Okay, obviously he doesn't know me that well. But uh, I guess the point is that if I can, can be consistent, then I think anybody can. It's, and I say this over and over, but he, he reminded me that I came as a complaint, that came as a, as, a, as a tzara, as a personality defect, which I know I have. It's, you know, I'm a, more of an entrepreneur. I, I like to start projects and in real estate also. I, get, I go crazy in the beginning. I go and go and go, eh, I'm going to finish. It fizzles out. And Marty could, could testify to it. So... It's a Limud Haskell for anybody. Anybody could take a uh, chizuk from it. We're here, Beis Hashem. I mean, in nine days from now, it's going to be 900 shiurim straight. 900 straight. Hope Doyle throws a big party. Come down to Mandalayan. I don't know where I'll be. But it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's Nisim. Dafyaymi creates Nisim. I don't know what it is, but it, it's able to do this. So I just want to show you a couple of pictures before we start. We jump into it. We're a little late today. This, these pictures show the essence of MDY. Over here you, you have, I don't know who the second guy is, Yiddi Schwartz, if he's Hasidish, not Hasidish, it doesn't look that Hasidish, but you have a Hasidish in Yaman, Yisrael Goldstein, everybody's familiar with, with Yiddi Schwartz in Brooklyn. Two Brooklyn guys, and check this picture out. Also MDY. Two Chayalim, Jack, Josh Holkauer from Odin and Charlie Engelhart, learning the daf in the IDF. That sits us outside, I know, I know Josh, Givaldike guys, but that's what MD, MDY is all about. You have the Chassidim, you have the guys in the army. Yisrael Singer says, thank you so much for all that you do with Tari spread. I'd just like to clarify something. Yesterday he showed the attached picture to the Shir informed them that Mayor Dickstein was listening to MDY. Here you go. This is Mayor Dickstein. So this Letz is, wants to say, I know Mayor very well. Chassidim, he's not Letz. And he was actually listening to this really boring singer Shir. I'm led to believe that the picture was submitted, but to Shruli, you can show it to the share, but he refused. Thanks again for making the daf great again. Your talent for life. Shruli singer, Inwood, New York. Now, you know this Shruli guy? No, You know Dixon? He listens to my share, right? Yes. He does. Okay. Givaldi. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to make sure. So, uh, the sponsor for, for the coil is anonymous as Chus of Hilv and Sardino. And Rivka of Asfega, the Shvizek, the Zerisha Kayama, parents of Chaydash, friends and family, for Shlem, for Yaakov Yudim and Gittel, try to follow me in this thing. I, I, I dare you. The parents of Chaydash, Breslau, Austin, Rosenberg, Shulman, and Tobias families, the Schos, Rafa Shlemo, for Rosh Yeshiva, Rabbi Shlomo, Mir Dovim, and Yukhavid, Druk Shlita. Somebody sends this to me. 
And when I paste and I copy and paste it onto PowerPoint, this is what it comes out. It's a big, big mumble jumble. Parents of Chodesh have been locked in the Lubavitch family's lake in New Jersey because Torah is the best school of parents of Chodesh. Chodesh Nisan. Spats of a Yoyli. Linish was the Pinchas Ben. I don't know. It, it gets confusing here. Pinchas Ben Moishal Avashal. Linish was Chomach Chayyav from Avaz Doiv. Pinchas Olei Avashal. Linish was Achil Shrago. Ben Avram Alevi Olei Avashal. Parents of Chodesh. Aaron Freeman was Chus. Paros and Shnei Hashemayim. And continue to have to Rebbe Eli. In memory of Chayyav Sora Baz David. Yechil. May the Neshama have an Aliyah. And Chayyim Weingarten. Appreciation. Mm-hmm. Of the sheer shkoyach, Dr. Mark Berkson, in honor of my in laws, Matt and Nina Weinstock, thanks for your love and support. Raboisai, here we go. Now, also, I need to warn the Oilam. This is where a lot of problems occur to the Oilam. We have a very stark Oilam, we're doing great, we're in Yavam, it's Pesach. Well, I'm gonna learn on Erev Pesach, so you take a day off. Then you're tired from the Seder, it's two days, and then all of a sudden you find yourself behind a couple of daf, and that's when the Eitzar kicks in. So our boy's side, the Eitzar, the guy I said, he's behind five daf, what do you do? You do today's daf. If you're able to do what the second guy said, and that's make it up, and as you're cleaning, and go one and a half speed without email, da-da-da, gewaldic. First, do today's daf. So, Motzi Yantav, do a Cheshman and Nefesh, don't be, don't be, uh, don't, don't go into some sort of, uh, so if you miss a daf, not the end of the world, you move on. Yesterday, we were talking about a Shemeris Yavam. And we had a stira, sort of. It seemed like a stira. What do we do between the Reish and the Seifa? A woman lost her husband before the Yavam had a chance to perform any Yibam or Chalitza. She inherited a nursing home. She inherited some significant cash, maybe. Does it have to be significant? But just to make the mice more interesting. So on the one hand, it says that she's in full control. She can do whatever she wants. It's as if she's not married. Full control. If she dies, all of a sudden, the husband jumps into the picture. Her brothers jump into the picture. The yachloiku, not yachloiku. What happened? Why is it when she's alive, she's in full control, 100% control? The, the yavam has zero to do with it. If anything, her brothers, her father, it's on her side of the family. Also, when she dies, the, the Yavama and the brothers, they, they jump in. So we had a bunch of Tiruts and four Pshatim. So let's just take a look real quickly. Abayis says there's a difference between the Reish and the Seifa. The Reish is that she inherited this nursing home, whatever it was, when she was not married. Unmarried, she married herself, and therefore she has full control. The Seifa... It's talking about when she inherited, when she was married to the first guy. Okay. So therefore, the first guy and his brothers, the first guy's not around anymore, he's dead. The brothers have a say. And Rabbi says, no, the whole difference is whether or not there was a mimer. Whether or not one of the brothers performed the Kiddush and gave her some money, if they gave her money, so they're sort of kinder in a way, and then they have control on the nursing home. If there's no mimer, like the beginning, the Reisha, then she has full control. Says the Gemara, Itmar, two, four, six, eight lines down. Got a head start here. Got to do two daf. And this daf we have to finish in a half hour, right? 20 minutes, actually. 10.30 we start the next daf. Okay. Itmar, Shmei, the Rebbe Lazar, Kavasei, the Rava. In the name of Rebbe Lazar, we said like... Rav Loza said like Rav, that what is the difference between Maimer and no Maimer? If there's Maimer, then the husband has control, his family. No Maimer, her brothers have control, the father has control. When did she inherit it? If she inherited it when the first guy was alive, then that side of the family has control. If she inherited it when she was a Shemer Siyavim, nobody was married to her, then she's in full control. Umi Omar Rebbe Loza Achi, did Rebbe Loza say like Rava, of Omar Rebbe Loza, or Maimer, Levishamek, Ey Nekoyna, Elo Lidchiz Mitzvah Bovad, Maimer doesn't do anything, it doesn't accomplish anything. Rava says if there's a Maimer, then her brothers step in and they take over the nursing home. That's not what he says. Maimer doesn't do anything. All it does is it pushes off another woman. But it does, you're not Koyna anything, you're not Koyna nursing homes with it. Says Gemara Epoch. So then just flip the, 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 the name. Say, instead of Rebbe Lazar, says like Rava, say Rebbe Lazar says like Abayah. Okay. You don't have to flip anything. 
When did I say the Maimer doesn't do anything? That Maimer doesn't do anything that she needs. It's not enough just to divorce her, she needs also Chalitza. I never said that Maimer is not strong enough that the other, the other guy should have some sort of say in the nursing home. That's not what I said. I was just talking about Ged and Chalitza. Omar Papa. Do you can ask this thing if I say that Abai? L'chayra, Abai is pshat. That there's a difference when she inherited the Nechassim. If she inherited it when she was all by herself, she didn't have a husband. And the Yavim didn't do Yibim yet, so then she's in full control. You can see this from the Mishnah. But there's a big question about the word Mesa, what we had yesterday. Why do you have to kill her? Why can't you say the whole case when she's alive? So let's see inside the Tani Nechazim and Nechazim. What's the Lashon? How does the, how's the, how's the Mishnah call a nursing home? Nechazim and Nechazim v'yotzimimah. They come in and they go out. Where do they come in from? Where do they go out to? It means they came in to the husband's family, into his possession. And they go back to the father. Okay? So you see that we're talking about that the Nechassim fell to her when she was married. That's what it means. Lushos Habal. She was married. You see Abai's answer. Abai says the difference between whether she was married with the first guy or not married at all. That's the difference between the Rish and the Sefer. Here you have it. It says Mufurish. The Nechassim Lushos Habal. She was married. Bavagav, the Kashi Mesa. But, okay, it's a great writer from the Mishnah, but we have a problem with the Mishnah. And the Gemara is going to remain with this thing. Why are you talking about the real estate? And that she died. He's talking about the prophets and she's still alive. Why do you have to kill her off? And that this whole thing that we said yesterday, that the, the, the husband has the same power as she does. So it's 50-50, but then when he dies, then the Zika goes down one level, so now it's 51-49, she wins. Or he's a little bit stronger according to one cheetah, so he's 51, she's 49, then when he dies, he drops the level, so they become 50-50. Okay, so why do you, why do you have to say that she's dead? I don't have anything to answer. You're right, great kasha. The bottom line is, from the Mishnah, it seems like Abai is right, just we have a bomb question about Misa. He fits in the best, but there's a really good question against it. This really means that we have nothing, we can't go either way, we can't say yes, no. It is what it is. Says the Gemara, it says in the Mishnah, Kansa harehi ki If the Yavim goes ahead and performs Yibum, what's that lacha? He's like a, she's like a regular wife. What does that mean? I thought the first time I saw, we, we learned this, I thought it was a phenomenal chiddush. The Gemara says, no, it's a, it's a pshita, it's so simple. The fact that the Yavam divorces her, that's not the, okay, that's a very big chiddush. He doesn't perform chalitza anymore. She's a wife, like a regular wife. How do you divorce a wife? Get. But here's the chiddush. After you perform a get, you're, there's a mitzvah to remarry her. And you marry her again. But she's a What happened to the fact she was a Ishazach? That disappears and disappears forever. I want you to remember this because I wanted to use this against my Chavrus and everybody else in the Kyle today. Got on a conference call and they all shot me down. And they brought a riot from Rishonim against me. I'm still not happy. Begar should be get. Pshita, of course. You divorce her with a get. It says, yes, she becomes his wife. But what does it say a second later, the next word? V'yibma. It seems like even though she's his wife, there's still yibum going on here. Omer Achmona of Adain Yibum Merisha Leo. So the Torah is maybe hinting that she's still a Yivama. Bechalitza in, beget loy. What does that mean, Bechalitza in? What does that mean, Rabbi Yisai? Bechalitza in, beget loy. Not like you read it. It means also Chalitza together with a get. Not just chalitza and forget about a get. But a get is not enough. You would need both. Kamash Milan, all you need is one thing called a get. Machzir Pshita, the Gemara took this as a given, even though for me it was a huge chiddush. 
Machzira, of course, he, once she's a wife, she's a wife. Why can't you take her back? So good the Khamina, Mitzvah, the Rami Rachmona Alei Ovda. The Torah told you, Bimi Yabim, Lachim Shem Lachim. Hasha take him Alei Bisej Yisach. Okay, you finished the Mitzvah, you shook the Lulav. Now everything goes back to the original Yisurim. Now she's still Aisha Zach. She's the wife of your brother. Komash Malon, that Avera of Arayas goes away. Beba Chinami, maybe, maybe it's so. Maybe there is an Avera. Omar Kro, the Kacha Loyli Isha. The bottom line is she turns into your wife. She doesn't stay as a Yavama. She turns into a regular wife. Kivish Lil Kacha, Hare Kishta Lachal Davar. Ubevach Lake Subasa. But you're responsible for the Ksuba. The Ksuba goes. Sorry, the ksuba is on the brother's estate. What's the lashon here? He's responsible. Says the Gemara, what does it mean? My time, You didn't ask to get married to this woman. They forced this woman upon you. They told you you should marry her. It's a big mitzvah to marry her. So you're not responsible for ksuba. What if the first guy is penniless? So then the second guy has to step in and give her a ksuba. Why? So this is a xeri de rabbanon that the second guy shouldn't just divorce her for no reason. It should hurt him. It should cost him at least 200 zuz. And he'll think twice before he divorces her. It's a, for me, it's difficult to understand exactly what's going on here because at the end of the day, if you think about it, the second guy inherits everything from the first guy. His entire estate goes to the second guy, including the ksuba money. So then what exactly does he gain by saying, no, it's not for me, it's for my brother. Everything your, your brother owns is you. I'm not 100% sure how it works exactly. Maybe with some sort of xerid or a button. I'm not, okay, a little bit of a tesis here. Says the Mishnah. Official Mishnah sponsored by the MDY Tamil group where we dive in for a full choice and she do him for Klai Yisrael and for our MDY family, join us at tehillim.aidmindav.com. Also, I was told by Yosef and Zev, this is the brand new second volume, which by the way, tonight we're making a siyum on the first volume. It's a big thing. You can laugh all you want, but we were making siyum in my Megillah, which was 30 daf, my Kata and Chagiga. Volume one is 40 daf. It's longer than a Masechta. We should actually celebrate. Hope uh, Simi brought some wine. No, 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 no. Says the Mishnah. Mitzvah bagodal yabim. You know, we're familiar with a lot of these halachas. We went through them. The Bukhar, the oldest brother, has the mitzvah to be miyabim. We go to him first. Loi If he doesn't want to perform the yibo, mahalchem akal achem, you go to the next guy. Each one, as they, they're older in age, they have the mitzvah. If everybody doesn't want to do yibum, you go back to the oldest one. You are the one responsible for the mitzvah. Decide, either do chalitza or yibum. What if he's full of excuses? Nah, I'm going to start the daf tomorrow. You know, yesterday we had a bris. We had a baby boy. We had another brother. Let's wait 13 years. In 13 years, come back to me. I have a feeling this little guy is a perfect shidduch for this 40-year-old woman when he <laughs> becomes 13. Yavaldik. So they tell him, no thank you. You know, we have an older brother. It's a bigger mitzvah than the older brother. But he is in Africa. He hasn't been back for 18 years, but we think he's coming back soon. We haven't heard from him. We think... So, no, no, thank you. The, the, the older one is a shtickle deaf, a shtickle uh, today became a shugana. Maybe tomorrow will be normal. Let's wait a little bit. We don't listen. Let's do the mitzvah right now. Says the Gemara, Itmar. It's amazing. If you had to think about it without looking in the Gemara, what would you say? What's a bigger mitzvah? For the young kid to perform yibum or the oldest boy to do chalitza? You had a choice. Everybody would say Yibam, right? Why? Because that's the Iker Mitzvah. Ah, that's what I would think. Oh, not bad. 
Bias Kadam Khalitza's Gadal. Pligi ba. There is a machlogis between Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Shua ben Levi, not Rish Lakish, but Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Chadam Rabbi Yas Kadam Adifa, it's better to do Yibo. Chadam Rabbi Yas Kadam Adifa. Mandam Rabbi Yas Kadam Adifa, the Mitzvah Yibo. The whole point of this thing is this should be Hakam Hashem Lachim. So let the young guy do it. No, no, no. Katan, sorry, sorry, let me explain. Katan does not mean a minor. Katan means the youngest brother. He's 37 years old. But compared to the 68 year old, he's the, he's, the, he's the small, he's the youngest. The mitzvah is in the oldest brother. The 68 versus the 37. If the 68 year old doesn't want to do it, you go to the 62 year old. Then the 59. Until you get to the 37. He's the katan in this case. We're going, it is confusing because we're going back and forth. Talking about the youngest brother versus the, the, a cotton that's a minor. Here, you're right. That's why you got confused. Because over there, the mission is talking about a minor. Let's wait until he becomes 13. That's different. Now we're going back. Says the Gemara, the mitzvah be evil. It's better that the older brother should perform chalitza rather than 37 year old yibob. Since the Torah says it's better to do with the Gadol, then everybody else is not considered anything. So even if the Katan, meaning the 38-year-old, decides to do Yibam, it's nothing compared to the older man's Chalitza. Says the Gemara, what about our Mishnah? Now, Loi Ratza, if the oldest one, the Bechar, doesn't want to perform Yibam, Mechazrim al Kol We go to all the brothers. My love, Loi Ratza liyabim el it seems like he didn't want to perform Yibom, only Chalitza. So if he didn't want to do anything but Chalitza, why are you going to the younger brother? Stop right there. His Chalitza is preferable than the next guy in line's Yibom. So the Raya is, it's a very good Raya, no? The reason why we're going to the younger one is because it's better that the younger one should do, perform Yibom rather than the older one perform Chalitza. He didn't want to get involved in it at all. He said, leave me alone. I don't want to have anything to do with her. She killed our brother. You don't know what happened. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to Bezdin with her. I'm not giving her Chalitza. Let her remain in Aguna. So they go to the next brother. What, what could you do? Could you do Yibom? Could you do Chalitza? He didn't want to do anything. If he wants to do Chalitza, perhaps his Chalitza is better than a Yibom. Says the Gemara, the Kavasa. Okay, wait a minute. Nice try. So it means he didn't. He didn't want to. He didn't even want to perform chalitza. The Kavasa, Gabi So then, when it, when the Mishnah says that they didn't want to perform something, what does that mean? They didn't want to perform the same thing the older one didn't want to perform. They didn't even want to perform chalitza. If so, am I chayzim in then if no one wanted to do chalitza, then why do you trouble yourself to get in a car and drive to another city and knock on the older guy's door and say, okay, nobody wanted to do yibom, now you do chalitza. Why can't we just go to the youngest guy and say, you do chalitza. What's chalitza? Chalitza is a get. Who cares who gives the get? The oldest, the youngest. Oh, you're thinking something's churning there, new. There's a, a greater mitzvah. You're going to tell me it's a bigger mitzvah for the older one to perform chalitza. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Let them force the younger one. Says Gemara, keep the mitzvah. Did they ram you since the mitzvah was on the gadol? That's why we force him to do the chalitza. It's his mitzvah. He should perform yibum. He doesn't want to do yibum. We'll, we'll try by the other ones, but it's, we're going to go right back to him. Let you take care of business. You do chalitza. Tanan, We we said if he he starts making excuses. Let's just wait for the minor. Over here, he's a minor. Until he becomes older, let's wait 13 years to his bar mitzvah. You don't listen to him. Bibi has caught an adifa. I'm proving to you. If it's better to do yibum with the younger one, rather than do chalitza with the older one, amai ain't shoyim loy. Why don't we listen to him? Nintar, yabim. Let's just wait 12 years. End of story. Says the Gemara, that doesn't make sense. How come if the Bukhar is away on business, we don't wait? It's better we should wait for him, for him to perform Chalitza. Even according to you, the Chalitza for the older one is the best way, so wait. So what's the answer? We don't wait for anything. 
Ela kol shahuye mitzvah loy meshehinan. Listen to this very interesting shayla that happened. They told a guy in prison in Israel. They said, "We're because of all your good behavior, we're giving you one vacation day." But you could pick which one you want—a birthday. You want. So he starts calling the rav. So what should I, which one should I take? Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. What should I do? What's the answer, Rabbi Isai? Why today? That's what they told him. But Dr. Dow, today, uh, no, tomorrow, whatever, the, 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 the earliest time you get, the, the certain mitzvahs you can't do in prison, go home right now. Perform any mitzvah you could do today. Don't worry about Yom Kippur. That's, that's a different time. Today. Hayoyim. Koshu'uye mitzvah loy meshehinon. By the way, we're talking about Pesach. What's the difference between chametz and matzah? It's the difference about waiting and not waiting. When you, you wait, you get chametz. You don't wait, you get matzah. You have, you have inspiration for a mitzvah, you have inspiration to, to learn Torah. You do it right now. You don't wait, you don't push it off. It's tomorrow. So the same thing here, it's obvious to me, I think it's obvious to everybody. Wait for Yibam for 12 years? Who knows what's going to happen in 12 years? Or one year, or three months, whatever it is, the guy's coming back from his business trip. Today we can perform Chalitza, let's get it over with. Chalitza. Zok to Gemara, oh. We just turned to that Lamentus on the base. Sponsor by Moshe Horn in honor of Jolly Joe Krause and family. And another sponsor in honor of Ed Kinsbersky, Brian Kinsbersky and Harry Miller for learning the Daf. It's the Amri. And some say a little different, a lot different. Like a lot of people in the room said, that it makes a lot of sense, that Yibum is the most important mitzvah, so it's better that we go to the youngest one, the 38-year-old, and tell him to perform Yibum, rather than the 68-year-old performing Chalitza. It just makes logical sense. We want to be making Shem Lachim. What about Chalitza? Is there a difference between the older and the younger one? Is there a preference in Chalitza? On the one hand, you could say, listen, Chalitza is a bad thing. It's just divorcing her. You're not accomplishing anything. Who cares who does it? Or no, the mitzvah of Yibom is by the Gadol, by the oldest boy. Let him do the Chalitza. Man, the Chalitza is God, the Gemara explains, the mitzvah of Gadol, at the end of the day, he has the mitzvah, so he should perform chalitza. The mitzvah that we said that the Gadol should perform is only yibum. Let's bring it right from our Mishnah. If nobody wants to perform yibum or chalitza, you go back to the God. My love, Sorry. The Gemara is going to prove. My love, What didn't they want to do? They wanted to perform chalitza. Even though the younger one wanted to perform chalitza, we ignore him and we go back to the oldest boy. So you see from here that it's better that the oldest man in the house should perform chalitza, not the youngest. That's not what it means. There's no proof. We can explain the Mishnah. They didn't even want to perform chalitza. So if so... So then when it comes to the Godel, it has to be the same wording, same, same, same meaning of the words. So if the meaning of the words when it comes to the brothers means they didn't want to perform Chalitza or Yibam, so that's what it means by the Godel. He didn't want to perform Chalitza or Yibam. So the question is, why did we force the older to perform Chalitza? Let's force any one of the brothers. Given the mitzvah, Lady Day Ramio, since he has the mitzvah of Yibo, only Day Kafinon, so we force him to perform Chalitza. Toshma, Tolaba Gadad, Shiobim, and Sayom, and Shavim Eloi. Yeah, these are all things that we're familiar with. We brought these rights before for the other shot in the Gemara. If they said, let's wait for the Gadad to come back from out of the country, ain't Shavim Eloi. We don't listen. Yisokadaito Chalitza is Gadal Adifa. And if you're telling me that it's better for the Chalitza, to be performed by the oldest boy, am I in Shemeloi? Nintar, let's just wait. The Ma'asi Bechalitz, maybe he'll come back. I like this Lashon. Maybe he'll come. Bechalitz, and it's better that he should perform the Chalitza than the younger one. 
Oh, Tamech, I'll, I'll force my answer even according to you. Well, Tamech, because of she Agdil, what about the second case? Don't wait for the minor until he gets older. Ain't shame, Loy, we don't listen to that guy. Let's wait, maybe he'll get older and I'll perform Yibom and it's better. So we go back to that Yisai. When it comes to mitzvah, we don't procrastinate, we do it immediately. Tnan Hasam. Mitzvah, even Kedem Islam, Mitzvah Chalita. The mitzvah of Yibam, what? I, I'm just curious if somebody's out there watching this year. Does anybody know of a real case of Yibam Bizman Azeh? That they were Miyabim, not Chalita. Because in the Sephardic communities, there's a minute to do Yibam. So, if anybody knows the Sephardi that's done Yibam, I'd like to meet the Yavam and the Yavama, bring them to Shir, a live, <laughs> live couple. <laughs> Just get the guy, it's fine. Um, now, so the mitzvah is performed with Yibam rather than Chalit, so that's the greater mitzvah. Berushayna says the Gemara, Shahayi Miskavim the Shem Mitzvah. In the older day, in the olden days, when people had Kavana for the mitzvah, that's how it was. Achshav, Shem Miskavim the Shem Mitzvah. But in our days, where people don't have Kavana for the mitzvah, Omru Mitzvah Chalitza Koydemes Le Mitzvah Yibum. It's preferable to do Chalitza than to do Yibum. The what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, but I thought we had it more than that. Yeah, we're going to have it even more. We're going to have uh, Abishol. He says it. But once again, you see Nachamal and Nachamal and Shas. And this again has to do with Lila Seder. Yiddishkeit, Judaism is all in the head. It's what we think when we're performing what we're doing. So you can take the same action, marry this woman. And it could be a great mitzvah of Yibam, or in your head you flipped it into Navera. We're going to see it's, it's Mavish and Navera according to Abishal, it's Znus. Why? Because you had the wrong Kavana. You didn't have the Kavana for Yibam, Lagum Shem, you had the Kavana, Lashum Noi, or whatever your Kavana was. Matzah, same thing. Get a piece of Matzah, zero Kavana. I don't know what kind of mitzvah you get. If you just think in your head, this, uh, this guy said to his friend, I have to think how it goes. Tells his friend, oh, you should have seen the kavanas I had in matzah. It's an un- I did so many yichudim and kavanas and, and uh, the entzaitzis and the zach and I don't even know these things. But whatever, whatever you do. What do they do over there? And you don't know. He says, you have no idea how many kavanas. I had so many kavanas. It was unbelievable. So his friend says, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't have any kavanas. I just had one simple kavana. I, I, I had kavana because Hashem said we should eat the matzah. His friend says, oof, that, that, that one I forgot to do. I did the other ones. I did everything else. Okay, but we have to have just simple kavana. We're eating matzah because Hashem said we should eat matzah. That's it. That's, that's lishma. If you don't have that, that kavana, then maybe you missed the whole, the whole boat. So is the Gemara, Omar Av, ain't koifin. You don't force chalitza. Yes, we're saying that in our days we do chalitza, we don't perform yibum. You don't force it. Says Rashi on top. Top Rashi. Omer Avin Koivin. Inichal tavayuli abume. Very important Rashi. We mentioned this also, but it's good to see it again. If both of them want to perform yibum, in Koivin we don't force them to do chalitza. The name alav, le mitzvah chavne, upoga be isra, eshesach. Don't say to yourself, oh, I know this guy is a, is a big dodo. He's not going to have the right kavanas, and he's going to be over in the iser of Eshazach of Erva. Eli, boy, miyabim. If he wants, he can be miyabim. Miu. Heicha. Du tzavili yabumi vi'i omra le'i bi'in alay. Oh. But what if a woman says, I don't like that guy. I don't want to be married to that guy. It happens all the time. Just because she married the brother, and never her brother died, doesn't mean that, the, that her loser brother-in-law should be married to her. She doesn't want him. No, this is very important Rashi. She says things that are, make sense. Listen, he's not a mukashchin. He doesn't look gross like, like that picture I once showed, a mamish, you know, a heavy disease. No, but he's a, you know, a little socially off, whatever. I don't know what. 
if we fool him and say, we'll give you, we'll pay you 200, we fool him. Be like Afin and says Rashi. That's Shita's Rashi. We, we had the Taisa says Mukhulik, that it, it's Tafka by in the Sugi of Mukashkin, we had this Taisa Rashi. It's Tafka, a full fledged Mukashkin. She has to, Rashi says, no, any excuse, anything. He, you know, he's, he's Hasidish, I'm Litvish, he's this, he's that, whatever it is, we don't get along. Finished. Chalitza. Okay, as I state, this is Rashi. Very important Rashi to remember. Okay. Oh. So we're holding in the middle of the page by Omar Rav in Kaifin. He also came the Rav. They came to Rav, Omer Lu, Ibois Lachloitz, Ibois Chaloitz, Ibois Yabem. Bididoch Tale Rechmona. You decide, you know, yes, yes, there's a, uh, there's a halacha that tells us today we shouldn't perform Yibam, it's better to perform Chalitza. It's up to you. You decide. You, you, you want to do Yibam, you do it. I'm telling you, I don't know, I didn't hear of a real true story. But some of the Svardim in Eretz said, yes, it's known. Svardim do Yibam. Okay, we have to see if it's Adi Yemazeh or maybe a hundred years ago. It says, if the man doesn't want, it says in the Torah, if he wants to, he could perform Yibam. We don't force Chalitza. I'm asking Rabbi Yehuda, because this is the Lashen that we say in the get of Chalitza. Eich ploinis bas ploini. I'm this woman, the daughter of this man. I brought this Yavam to Bezda. I, I recognized in him this Yavam, I recognize he's a brother. The one was going to say, what? How do you recognize? Does Edim, not Edim? Does she does Edim? But you don't need Edim at the end of the day. We know. It's, it's, it's a known thing. Somebody came in, a, a woman testified that, that it's a brother. And we told him, if you want to be miyavim, yes, not. And if not, and if you don't want to be miyavim, give me your right foot. There's an interesting, there was a man who was a yavam and he was missing his right foot. And the Tzanzi Rebbe said, he has no breira. There's no yibum. There's no chalitza. He has no right foot. He has to do yibum. He has to perform yibum. And Rabbi Yashif Paskin that it, it should, he should do the, the chalitza on the left foot. Telling you a Maisa Shaya, a, a true story. I, I said, give me your right foot. And I'm going to undo, untie the shoe from his foot. I'm going to spit. We had this, we discussed this, the Rav, the Mamish of Maisa that happened recently. This woman spit and the Rav said, no, no good, do it again. And she couldn't. He kept on saying, spit over, spit. I can't see the spit. It has to be the Mishazio that you could see the spit, visible. Like a schmack of spit. The Mishazio, and this is all, sometimes she's 70 years old and you know, it's hard to spit. The Mishazio, alara, see it on the ground. Not necessarily, see it. And Rebchia finishes it off. And we read off the Psukim. They had to read the Psukim that say that from the Sefer, the Torah of Moshe. Check this out. Just, so I just took this from Rashi. It says like this. Okay. What you see over here is whatever is in red, they say, whatever's in blue, you'll, you'll see that you can't even say it. It's the Torah explaining. If the man doesn't want to take the Yavama, obviously they're not going to say this. And she goes up, to the, to the Bezin, to Amra. Oh, here, she says, He refuses my Yavam to do what he's supposed to do. He doesn't want to be Yavam. Oh, then Pasuk Ches says, and he says, and here, we make him say this, and this is what it says over here. 
We, yeah, he says the psukim in the, the, in the Torah. Yes, I don't want to take her. Now, she spits and she says, oh. I don't know, maybe, that, that, maybe I shouldn't have highlighted that. This is what you do to the person who doesn't want to perform chalitza, you spit at a shoe. Spit. So now the Gemara just goes into that word. I recognized. What does it mean I recognize that he's the brother of my dead husband? I recognize through Edim. You don't need Edim. I feel Karayv. Even a relative, I feel Yisha. Ve'ilchasa, and this is how we pass in Shulchan Aruch. Galui milsa ba'almuhu. It's tam to you have to recognize. I feel karayv. Even a relative can testify. I feel Yisha. Obviously, not the person themselves, not the person that's negav a davar, but even a relative. Zog to Gemara Baruch Shaino. Show him his kavanah shei mitzvah. Mitzvah zim kodem is mitzvah chalitza. In the beginning, people did l'shem shomayim. Ba'achshav shem is kavnim l'shem mitzvah. Omer mitzvah chalitza kodem is lo mitzvah zibo. It's better to perform chalitza. Omer Rabbi Chama. Omer Rabbi Yitzchok. Chazru loyman. They went back to say mitzvah zibo kodem is lo mitzvah chalitza. The mitzvah to perform chalitza. Omer Rabbi Nachman Yitzchok. Ikash adari. What do you mean? We went back to say that you should do give them what our generation is better than the previous generation. The Gemara always says well, they were like Lamalach and we're not even like Khamirim. So every generation is less, not more. Says Gemara Mikara Sarvalok Abishol. In the beginning they held like Abishol that what that's considered an Avera. Ula Basai Sarvalokra Bona. The Sanya Abishol Imir. Hakai this is even to the Shum Noi. Ushum Ishus. If somebody has the wrong intent, he says he's, he's, he thinks to himself, he's marrying this woman because he wants to be married. He's sick and tired of being Delta or Bachar and Yeshiva. He wants to be married. Nothing to do with Yibam or Nai. She's a beautiful woman. Nothing to do with, with Yibam. For another reason. It's similar to being over and arayis on Ejizach. <coughs> to the point, he says, the Korev Ani Be'enai, it's in my mind, Leois Havlad Mamzer, so much so is he over and a Vera that it's almost like the sun is a Mamzer. So, a number of things here. The Shvus Yaakov says, this, this is what I had a, a, a Shaila. I asked my Chavrusa, he wasn't masking to me. I thought, I still think, that this whole problem is the Bia Rishayna. The first time he's with her. But once he's with her for a moment, then she flips into a regular wife, the Isser of Eish is removed, and then the second time he can do whatever he wants. He doesn't have to have Kavanas for, for Yibam. And, and the guys in the Koyal held, no. They brought me a Raya, they found a Ritva in another Mesechta that says like them, they couldn't find anybody like me. But what they could, did find is the Shavos Yaakov says that if a person, very interesting, if a person has a mixed kavana, that's also okay. A person thinks to himself, I want to be kind of you, but also happens to be, she's a very special woman, blah, 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 and I'm not going to be single anymore. So that's okay, he says. No, we're talking about Arayas here. We're talking about, so Abishol holds that since... Typically, this woman is 100% usher to you because she's your brother's wife. And the Torah made a dispensation and said, the Torah, you could marry her because you're performing something here. You're bringing a child into the world that's going to be considered his child or whatever. So you have to have that kavana. You can't just... We're going to talk about kavana soon, even matzah. Lela Seder, we're going to talk about the daf. Tomorrow's daf is about the Lela Seder. It's unbelievable. Not some coincidence. It's a crazy... Hashgacha Pratis. But Rav Shimon Shkup says, it's, uh, this is incredible. I don't know where he got it from, but he, listen to this Chiddush Marty. You hear? Rav Shimon Shkup. He says that you have to have kavana that you're marrying this woman, L'Shem Mitzvah, beforehand. But when it comes to the act, the actual yibum, 
a, per, a human being is a human being, and he's going to have kavana for taivas or whatever his kavana is, he doesn't ruin it. That's not a, that's not a rise. That's being normal. The kavana has to be beforehand. That's what he says. Before, like when he goes to the shidduch, and he says, uh, the right kavana then. Okay. So that's that. There was a, a vitz that, that's going to get me into trouble, I think. But it's one of those nights that, uh, you know, doing two shiurim. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. And if it doesn't work out well, uh, maybe Yosef will edit it before my, uh, the enemies get a hold of it. There was a, there was a, a baba that was seeing people. And one of the people that came to him said, listen, uh, she, she comes to him and she says, you know, my, my, my husband, he ran away. Ran away? What should I do? So he was a big tzaddik, this Baba. He doesn't look at anybody. He set his down. So he tells her, listen, you give me $10,000, I'll tell you what to do. So she gives him $10,000. He says, I'm telling you, he'll be back very soon. Okay. Gets her, she leaves. She's going down the block. She sees the sign, says Baba. She goes in there. This Baba is not such a tzaddik. He's looking around, looking. Steps up. He says, look, my husband ran away. He says, his husband ran away. Oi, is he going to come back? He says, ten thousand dollars. I'll tell you the answer. She gives her. She gives him ten thousand dollars. He says he's never coming back. She says, yeah, but the bigger tzaddik, the bigger Baba, he doesn't even look at people. He's never picked up his head. He said he's coming back. He says, yeah, exactly, because he didn't see what you look like. Okay. Maybe we should just erase that one. Okay. Zok the Gemara. Lishum I just remember because Lishum Noi. Lishum Noi. It's one of these jokes that the guy got thrown out of Yeshiva for two weeks for saying it. Says the Gemara. Chicago at night. Ah, but this shit is going to be shown there to show during the day. Mm, it's a problem. Okay. Zok the Gemara. Uh, no, we don't have to be concerned with Abishol. However, whatever Kavanas doesn't matter. Zogli Mora Mantan Allah is Harabon and Yavami of Yoleho Mitzvah. So listen to this. We have to remember this Lashon a little bit. The Torah about Yavami of Yoleho Mitzvah. Shibitri Lahis Allah of Bechal Hatter. This woman, he could have married her. She was mutter to the whole world. Then what happened was his brother went ahead and married her. So that what happened? Nesra. She became also to the whole world, including him. The brother died, so she became mutter again. So perhaps you should say that whatever her heter was in the beginning, so too her heter should be now. We have to understand what that means. That what? What can you do? Okay, what's Pshad in this Brisa? So now, if you look at the words, hmm, blank. End of slideshow. Oh, I know why. Uh, no, it's in a different day. Tomorrow's year. Okay. So, Mantana Omer Vizhubarav Dimi Abasholi. This goes according to Abishol. This woman was mutter to the whole world. You can marry her for any reason you have in your mind. You don't have to be a big tad. Nesra, but then she got married to your brother. She became also to you. So she went from being come, from being also to mutter. Maybe you should be able to marry her. You have to have kavana for the mitzvah. Rav Amar, it's important to remember this. So the pshat number one, it goes according to Abishol. I would think that this woman was mutter, you can marry her for her beauty or whatever you want to marry her. And that was mutter. And then she became aser, and then she became mutter again. So go back to being able to be miyabim or have any kavana you want. Kamash no, you have to have kavana for a mitzvah. Rav Amar, afilu teima rabbana. I could go even according to Rabbanon. So what's the mitzvah? What's that veira? 
or the iser, the iser in the heter. Vachikama. Yevama yavay alei ha mitzvah. She betchil ha yizah b'chalal heter. Anybody can marry yotza koinza, yotza ene koinza. You don't have to, you're not forced to marry. Nesra, then she married your brother. She became master to you. Chaz v'hutra, then she became mother to you. Yochad achzal ha'tei rishah and yotza koinza, yotza ene koinza. Oh, maybe you have the option not to perform yibum. Nothing to do with she's usher and your kavanas. Maybe you don't have to. What do you mean what do you mean you're not gonna you're not gonna be me her. So how's she gonna get married to somebody else? You have a bond, there's a ziga going on here. If you want, you could perform chalitza. It's the same mitzvah as performing Yibam. You hear the, the Gemara's have him, you know. Maybe it's equal. That's the Shailah. Maybe you don't get a greater mitzvah by performing Yibam. You could be in the same mitzvah. It's either you, you do this or you do that. But they both get a hundred uh, points in Gan Eden. says, Gemara, Tamaloy, Me'evam Yavaleo, Mitzvah. The greater mitzvah in the, the Iker Adin is to do Yibam. And if you don't, you do chalitza, but it's not as great. Oh. So I think we should stop right over here. Rabbi Isai, have a wonderful day. For those of you who are moving on, have a chakosher v'sameach.